There's definitely a smart way to lose belly fat and achieve a weight loss goal. There's also a really hard way. I'm diving into the details on how you can achieve your weight loss goal the smart way in today's video. Okay, but before we dive in, today's video is sponsored by an amazing sleep app called Rise. One huge strategy that you'll see we'll be talking about on the smart way to achieve a weight loss goal is by addressing your sleep. Because poor quality sleep has been linked to increased hunger levels and increased stress levels the next day that can cause increased weight gain around the belly, addressing your sleep is hugely important. And the Rise app for better daily sleep and energy levels not only helps you track your sleep so that you can better optimize your sleep, but one thing I've been nerding out about it that's really cool is that it shows you your specific peak melatonin concentrations or when your body's going to be secreting the most melatonin. And melatonin is a sleep hormone, but it also shows you how much sleep you need, when your daily energy peaks are going to be, when those energy dips are going to be, so it helps you plan your day as well. And the Rise app is providing the AM peeps 40% off an annual membership, which is amazing. I have that down in the description below. Definitely don't miss out on that. Well, first let's talk a little bit about that hard way because a lot of people are doing it. The hard way is a combination of really intense exercise paired with really restrictive calorie counting. Both rely on a state of semi-starvation, whether it be by not eating enough or exercising a lot. What this approach does not do is address the satiety hormones. And because it doesn't address the satiety hormones, this is why people are constantly hungry when using this approach, which is one of the reasons why it's so hard because you're always hungry. Compliance is going to be pretty low. Not to mention constantly focusing on this approach where you're in that state of semi-starvation can cause your basal metabolic rate or your metabolism to start to decrease. This means that you are constantly having to either exercise a ton more or continue to decrease your calories in order to fight against that constantly decreasing metabolism. That means it continuously gets even harder to achieve your weight loss goal and you keep getting hungrier and hungrier. Now, one of the best macronutrients to fight against both of these issues is going to be protein, which we'll dive into with the smart way in just a second. But the last really important component about this hard way of achieving a weight loss goal is that in addition to this extreme calorie restriction and over-exercise, it usually doesn't address sleep. And most Americans are getting really bad sleep on a consistent basis, whether it be not getting enough or not getting high quality sleep. And when you're sleeping, that's when your body is actually recovering from the day before, especially if you're exercising. And poor sleep is already tied to increased cortisol stress hormone levels the next day, which increased cortisol levels are specifically tied to weight gain around the belly. But with that increased exercise, the sleep that you're already getting probably isn't going to be enough for the increased exercise that you've been adding in, which means that your body might not have the opportunity to rebuild your muscles and you're always in the state of tearing down your muscles, which can then just further decrease metabolism. Not to mention just make you feel sore and tired all the time. All of which make this very hard and not sustainable. Now let's talk a bit about that smart way. And this comes down to four main steps. The first is addressing satiety or that sensation of fullness. When you feel full and satisfied, it's a lot easier to maintain what you're doing because you actually feel good. You're not hungry. You're not craving sugar. So compliance goes way up. And two of the main satiety hormones are going to be peptide YY and CCK. Now, in order to stimulate both of these so that you feel full and satisfied, you need to be getting enough of both protein and fat. If you don't know exactly how much protein you should be getting in per day, I have a video that breaks that down right here. By getting enough of both protein and fat, you're going to feel more satisfied, you're not going to get those sugar cravings, and it's going to be a lot easier to stick with what you're doing. Second step is to address your sleep. Now, this is before you even look into exercise. Sleep is really that important for achieving a weight loss goal because if you don't address your sleep, it's really just an uphill battle from here. And we're looking to achieve a weight loss goal the smart way, not the hard way. Because as we noted, when you address your sleep, you can help address the cortisol or stress levels as well. And cortisol and melatonin, our sleep hormone, are really intimately related. When our stress hormone levels are high, our melatonin levels don't really get the chance to increase. And in order to get that deep, high quality sleep that's needed for muscle recovery, as well as for feeling good the next day, we need to allow our body to naturally increase the melatonin. Now our body will do this naturally on its own. We just kind of have to let it. And we're doing a lot of things to not allow our body to increase the melatonin. One of the best things you can do for focusing on sleep quality is creating a bedtime routine for about one hour before bed. Now with that bedtime routine, one of the best things that you can incorporate is a no tech time. This means no phone, no laptop, no TV. All these electronics emit blue lights that trick your body into thinking it's daytime out and make it so your body will not produce the melatonin. Exposing yourself to darkness is one of the best things you can do as well to help your body naturally increase melatonin. So whether that be sleeping with an eye mask on or sometimes 
sometimes for myself personally, I find it really useful to go walk outside for a little bit where it's naturally going to be darker than the light that's in your room. So your body can start getting acclimated to the fact that it is nighttime and it's time to start producing that melatonin. But it's also really important to make sure you're not consuming any caffeine past 2 p.m. And if you're someone like me where you're more caffeine sensitive, you'll also wanna make sure that you're not consuming it past 12 p.m. Caffeine can spike that stress hormone cortisol, which can interfere with the melatonin production. Okay, the third step is to address the storing hormone. And the storing hormone is insulin. One of the best ways you can do this is by not eating as much of the foods that really spike the storing hormone insulin. So if you're consuming a lot of the foods that really spike insulin, it's going to be a lot higher, which means it'll be even more difficult for your body to tap into fat burning. So an easy way to make a really big impact on storing hormone insulin is by really reducing or removing added sugars and processed and refined carbohydrates. So pasta, honey, agave, rice, cereal, bread, granola, maple syrup. Instead, you can swap these really high glycemic, really insulin spiking types of foods for lower glycemic or less insulin spiking alternatives. So spaghetti squash, cauliflower, leafy greens, squash, lentils, broccoli. And the fourth step is to balance your exercise with your sleep and cortisol levels. Now let's say you have a really high stress job where you're really only able to get five or six hours of sleep a night, then it's probably not a good idea for you to really increase your workouts because you won't have enough sleep available for you to recover from those workouts. Then we get back into that hard way of achieving a weight loss goal. In these circumstances, getting outside for a walk will be one of the better options for you because it allows you to get some movement in while also working more toward balancing out those cortisol levels. But if you've gotten to that point where you're able to get a lot more of that high quality deep sleep, this is where you can start to increase that intensity and add in more strength training or running or high intensity interval training. It's important to make sure that you're balancing out your exercise routine with your sleep. This is why if you're an athlete, it's really important that you're getting a lot more sleep and a lot more high quality sleep than most Americans are getting. In fact, if you want to check out my cortisol balancing workout routine, you can check out this video next. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love the science-backed information, make sure you subscribe right here. Come out with new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. And thank you again, Rise App, for sponsoring today's video. Guys, make sure you check out that 40% off link down in the description below so that you can actually start improving your sleep quality. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.